Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. And on the line with us today, we have Patricia Jenkins Burns. And we're going to be discussing her amazing book, A Life Worth Living. And people, I will say, Patricia was brought to our network, People of Distinction, by some of the best publishers in the business. Authors Press Publishing. So if you or anyone you know have a book that they'd like moved, I'm telling you people, you could do no better than contacting Authors Press and having them move it for you. They're one of the best in the business to do it, and you can find out more information on them at AuthorsPress.com. And listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have Patricia here on the line. She's going to be able to articulate everything much better than I ever could, so sit back, strap in, and get ready for a wonderful ride. Patricia, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction, and thank you very much for being a guest. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Patricia, thank you very much. You're too kind. The pleasure is all ours, okay? And I, and I really do mean that. I think what you're embarking upon here is very, is profound, right? Because not only, of course, the benefit that I'm sure it has for you, but also, listen, if we talk about the past... I don't know, three years going on, what feels like 40 years now that we've been dealing with this pandemic and the variations of lockdown that we've all experienced. I, the bottom line is, Pat, is that we are all experiencing a lot of adversity right now. We are all experiencing some challenges right now. And this book is perfectly timed because I firmly believe that we're going to be able to learn from your experience and we're going to make our journey just that much easier because of it. So thank you for being a guest. Before we go into the book, Pat, I want to learn a little bit more about yourself and your background. So let's start there. Please tell us a little bit more about yourself. I grew up in a village called University Park, Maryland, with a professor father uh, who was the director of aviation psychology in World War II. Uh, I, uh, when I was 12 years old, I encountered sudden tragedy when I discovered my father's body, he had committed suicide. Oh. And so I have had to live on many years after that, and yet I managed to go through uh, college with distinction, uh, earn a PhD, end up uh, being a tenured associate professor emerita at Fairfield University in Connecticut, and now I am in a retirement community in which I felt secure and safe. And so I put my book of poetry, A Life Worth Living, together to share with my hopefully many readers. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for sharing, Pat. And again, I know I said this on the pre-screening call, but I'm going to say it once more. My sincerest apologies and condolences to the passing of your father, you know, Pat, next question that I want to go into, how did you come up with the book? Well, I have written poetry since I was seven years old. Uh, some published, uh, obviously, quite unpublished. And I thought that uh, writing a book of poetry would be a way to communicate best with my audience in my senior years. Mm -hmm. What would you say was one of the most surprising things that you learned along this journey, Pat? I discovered, as I was sharing my poetry with others, how deeply affected people were in reading my poetry. Uh, we have here in our community Dan Sharp, for example, who was a Deputy General of California, and I'd like to read his brief tribute. Quote, this is a moving and beautiful collection of tributes written with great honesty self-awareness and profound sadness, tempered after a while with triumph. And then he went on uh, to uh, conclude by saying, while I don't normally read poetry, I couldn't put this down without finishing it as it was so engaging and moving. You know, Patricia, uh, let's cover inspiration next, okay? 
Now, multi-part question here, but first and foremost, were there any artists or people that inspired you uh, to embark upon this creative journey? Well, I uh, read poetry from the time I could first read, and I felt that my natural voice would be that of uh, poetry, uh, starting with people like Edna St. Vincent Millay and Emily Dickinson and so forth. Uh, and so I felt I wanted to share my experience with others because I've been a professor uh, and I want to reach out to people, uh, especially people who are having difficulties with their life, because I thought my poetry and my experience might give them strength. Uh, Patricia, I, I'm, I love your title, right? A Life Worth Living because it instantly stops you in your tracks and it really is something that is very intriguing and it grabs your eye. Now, I could assume the title of your book and the connection that it has to the narrative based upon everything that you've said so far, but Patricia, you know what happens when you assume, so I'm not gonna do that to you. I have you here on the line, let's go directly to the source. Talk to us about the title of your book and why you chose that to be the representation. I chose it because my father renounced his life when he chose suicide as a way out. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to counter that, uh, being a person of less professional esteem and importance by declaring that I, his daughter, had lived a life worth living. I love it. I absolutely love it. People, again, we're here on the line with Patricia Jenkins Burns. We're discussing her amazing book, A Life Worth Living. You know, Patricia, next question that I'd love to go into, and listen, I have to hurry up and go here because my listening audience is going to get very upset with me if I don't ask this next one. Now, we know that in addition to being a memoir, this is a collection of poems. Well, Patricia, I'd love to take this opportunity yes. and hear one of them. If you have a poem readily available, we would love to hear it. Okay, I'm not going to read the entire poem titled Fathers. But I'd like to start with my recreation uh, through the last evening of my life with my father. Mm -hmm. Because it was a snow scene that evening, and we were walking along. And so I conclude my poem entitled Fathers with this section. Parent and child, we drifted through the snow for the last time. How much he missed the father he'd lost so many years ago. How much I miss. And then a break. Finally, the words, no words will do. Oh, best beloved, just memories of memories and lives forever closed. And it was as if I was shutting a door showing that I could not go back. Uh, the next day and say, well, Dad, uh, how are you feeling today? My dad was gone. Mm -hmm. He'd taken away his life. <sighs> People, can we just take a second and acknowledge the bravery that it took for Patricia to, to construct this book? And listen, I, I, Pat, I know you're not looking for praise, okay? So I'm not doing this to, to praise you. I just want to point out the fact that, <sighs> listen, how often do we shy away from viewing something some things about ourselves and aspects about our own lives that we may not like or that we find discomfort in so we try to bury some of those things right we try to to, to block it out so a it's hard enough for us as individuals to recognize certain things within ourselves or within our past but then to take it a step further and construct this literary window of sorts for everyone to look in and to see those things takes an immense amount of bravery not only to expose yourself to the public that way but also to have to relive those experiences over and over because of course as she's writing this book i'd be hard pressed to believe that she wasn't constantly thinking of that traumatic experience i mean it's a big part of the book so of course it would be a big part of her mind. And I and I love the fact that you did that and tying that into your title, A Life Worth Living. It really carries weight. It moves mountains, people, because again, maybe you don't know anyone that has ever committed suicide 
Or maybe you yourself have been in a position where you've contemplated it. That title and the message found within the confines of the book, with the message found on those pages are so profound and are so important. And listen, I, I know, I know people that have committed suicide. I know people that have attempted it. It is an incredibly depressing situation to be a part of. And I'm so glad that you took it upon yourself, Pat, to really put the words together and to put this out because I really, I truly believe this. This is going to be very beneficial for for a lot of people out there, for everyone that picks it up. So tying it into my next question, Pat, who would you say is your intended audience with this book? And what is what is the main message that you hope they receive from it? Well, I have a concluding dedication and it says this i dedicate these poems to those who must must live on through the aftermath of a loved one's suicide suicide leaves in its wake so much pain so much suffering perhaps if my own beloved father had witnessed the disillusion of his family he might have found another way to grow beyond his pain my own pain has been so deep, the secret of my father's death so consuming, and yet I have found my way. I had a richly rewarding career as an English professor. My subsequent marriages gave me renewed happiness and two wonderful stepchildren who have phoned me almost every Sunday. As I proceed onward in my advancing age, I feel left absolutely i love that pat i love that i love that message there listen i could think of no better way to close out of such a phenomenal interview as this one has been than with another one of your poems pat so please if you have another one readily available myself my listening audience we are all ears yes i wrote this uh, poem because i did not feel consoled by either my mother or my brother i found love through my teacher and her students and so i wrote to my teacher and her students they comforted me sheltered me from my loneliness my fears provided familyhood a place where i belonged miss carlin loved us all as we looked beyond as the flock of seventh grade students held out their hands so I could find my way. And may I just close with a poem entitled Legacy? Yes, please. Uh, It is a brief poem that accepted by Manhattan Poetry Review. It was written about a black friend of mine uh, who also found her life difficult because of the obstacles that she faced. And so I wrote this poem, Legacy, in those hills rich in coal but poor in blessings her daddy papered white men's walls stealing light from the ceiling six feet of despair reached up with his legacy his papering shears and gin she drank cursing her daddy's pain and cut with fingers forged in fire knowing the house she papered was her own knowing too that when she stole to church, she made the good folk whisper as she sat down with her new white flame. And what I'm suggesting there is my courageous friend how to create a life for herself, knowing all of the obstacles that she had endured in her life. And I likened her condition in some ways to my own. And I would say God bless those people who have listened to this interview. And I hope that you will find inspiration in purchasing my book. It's a book, A Life Worth Living, that you can come back to and read any poem, any section when you feel the need. There you have it. Listen, people, at the end of the day, having that community around you, be it family, be it friends, be it a teacher, 
it is so important to have that support system. It's so important to have, you know, people that you can turn to, right? And 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 have them assist you on that journey. I love it. People, I, you know what I love even more? Is we're at the end of the interview now. We've discussed so much information, yet we still have barely scratched the surface. I mean, there's still so much left to be discovered. We've only covered two poems, and, well, really partly of two two poems there's still so much more to be witnessed purchase your copy today folks i truly do mean this this is an absolute this is a movement right it's so much bigger than a book the words that are found on the pages can truly help transform your life depending on where you are in it and even though that path may seem very dark the words found in this book could be the light that illuminates the path. I really do mean that. Head on over there, pick up your copies today, and you have Patricia Jenkins Burns to thank for it. Pat, this has been an absolute pleasure. Such an honor, I really do mean that. Thank you once again for being a guest on People of Distinction. And thank you. I appreciated the opportunity. God bless you all. <laughs>